hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is monique if this is your first time here please don't forget to click on the red button below to subscribe and to all my subscribers thanks for the support today i'll be showing how i made this easy dress so this is the fabric i'm using so this is the velvet i'll be using on the top part this is a doll face satin i'll include this lace on the satin this is the mesh i'll be using this mesh on the for the illusion and this is the lining so let's get started if you have been following my tutorials i'm sure by now you should know how to draw for basic bodies so this is a basic body half scale that is shoulder to the waist here i have shoulder to the chest line the bust point under bust and the waist line and on the back i have shoulder to the chest line and the back half length here i also have the skirt pattern i'll be dropping the link on the description box on how to draw for basic skirt so this is the front and the back then I've gone ahead to take one inch for the zipper allowance. The pattern paper is on the fold. That's the center front. So this is the armhole. From the armhole, I'll take the armhole princess darts. So from the center point of the armhole, I'll connect it to the boss point like this. That's from the center point. Then from this point, I'll come down by one inch. Then from that one inch, I'll extend it upward by one inch. Then I'll connect it to the boss point. So this is the armhole that I'll just reshape the armhole like so. I'll be altering these basic bodies. For the front neckline, for the width I use 3 inches and for the back I also use 3 inches. Then the depth I use 3 inches and the depth for the back I use 1 inch. Now to form the bustier cup, I'll get the bust side conference which is 31. 31 divided by 4 will give us 7.5. I have about 4 inches here on the first dart leg. So I'll skip the dart and continue the measurement from the second dart leg. So I have placed a 7.5 here. Then I have excess of 1.75. So to tighten the bust, I'm going to use 3 quarter here and 1 inch here to form the cup. So from here, I'll take the 1 inch. Then from this other part, I'll take the 0 0.75. So from the bust point, I'll connect it to meet this 1 inch. I'll use my armhole cuff to do that. Then I'll shape it to the 1 inch. Then from this same boss point, I'll connect it to meet the 0 0.75 here. From this dart leg, you can connect it straight to the waist. Or you go in by 0 0.5 for someone with a flat tummy. So I'll go in by 0 0.5. Then I'll connect it from this point to meet the 0 0.5 inches. Then I'll just connect this straight to the dart leg. So I'll just reshape this sharp edge. Now I'll be taking the side dart, I'll get the difference between the front and the back. So the front is 17 and the back is 16. So I'll place it on the bust point from this line. I'll come down by 1 inch, then I'll place it on the bust point. You can go out by 1 inch for a busty person. So I'll open the waist dart, then I'll transfer the side dart, that's the side bust dart to the waist dart. I'll transfer it by closing it from this point. From this one inch to meet the boss point now use my masking tape to hold it i'll just reshape this line then it, as you can see i've transferred this side dart to the waist i'll also be closing this armhole dart because of the yoke i'm going to create here it will affect it if i don't close it so i'll close it by the one inch i took and i'll use the masking tape to hold it so as you can see i've closed the dart and i've transferred it to the waist also so from the chest line, I'll come up by 2 inches to get the upper chest line. I'll just draw it out like so. Then from this point, from this new upper chest line, I'll come in by 1 inch. Then on the underbust, I'll come in by half an inch. So I'm trying to get the yoke. So I'll just take like a slant line to meet the 1 inch from the underbust then on this armhole point that's this chest line i'll come down by maybe you can come down by one or two inches but for this i'll come down by one inch then from this point i'll take like a slant line to meet the one inch with my pattern master like so so this part will be our our yoke this is where the mesh will be so when i cut it you understand on the back i'll do the same thing to get the back yoke I'll come down by one inch from this armhole so that it will tally with the front. 
I'll connect it by one inch and on this point I'll come down by 1.5 inches here then I'll take a straight line to meet the one inch now the next thing I'll be taking is the back tightening so to avoid zip bulge I'll come in by 0.75 from this back half length then I'll connect it to the neckline like so so I'll be altering the neckline I used three inches earlier for the width so now I'll extend it to four inches here then I'll connect it to meet this new line but before then I'll, I'll go in by half an inch because of the zip I'll use my pattern master to connect it like so so this will be the new neckline and this will be the yoke so on the darts for the back I'll extend it to the chest line that's this this center line I'll extend it to the chest line and I'll take quarter inch on both sides I'm doing this to avoid gaping when I you know you know we are adding mesh so that it will not gap. I'll just extend it like so to the dart I'll be cutting this dart out and I'll join it back so that it will not gap. Now on the front, I'll also extend the neck width by 4 inches like we did for the back. Then I'll connect it to the neck depth like so. So I'm making a sleeveless dress. So if I decide to use this shoulder width, it will be too wide. So I'll have to reshape it by coming in by 1 inch from the shoulder width here. So I'll come in by 1 inch and reshape the armhole. So this will be the new armhole. I'll cut this part out. I'll do the same thing for the back. From the shoulder width, I'll come in by one inch. Then I'll reshape the armhole. I'll be cutting this for the yoke. Now on the front, I'll start cutting it out. So I'll cut through the underbust. I'll stop on the underbust and cut through it. So this will serve as our yoke. Then I'll open this armhole that, then I'll cut through it also. Then I'll cut through the underbust. I'll do the same thing for the side, I'll cut through the underbust. So this is the center front and the side front. So I'll just label it. I'll call this one, two. Then for this, I'm going to join it on the dart to make it one piece. I'll use a masking tape to hold it here. So this will be the third the third pattern so to get our bust effect so i'll take another pattern paper on a fold and i'll place this on it from on the waistline i'll make sure it's aligned i'll use masking tape to hold it then from the waist i'll come down by you can use three or four inches but for this i'll be using four inches then i'll connect it to the waistline using my pattern master so I'll just cut through it like this. So this is a triangle shape. So it will be like this. This is the side and this is the center front. So on the skirt pattern, I'm going to place this triangle shape on a fold. I'll place it on the waistline. I forgot that I'm supposed to close this front skirt that. So I'll just go ahead and close it like this. And I'll use the masking tape to hold it before placing this piece on it. So I'll make sure it's accurate. And I'll shape it out. So I'll cut through it. I don't want to to have that on the dress because it's a lace there's no need to for the dart to show but the effect of the dart will still be there so i'll cut out this back yoke then i'll cut through the darts i'll close it i won't be cutting it i'll just close it like this i want it to be one piece also and i'll use a masking tape to hold it so i'll be cutting two of this also on the front skirt i'll cut two so I've traced this on the on a new pattern. So I have this. I'll be using it for the drip. Then from the waistline, I'll come down by six inches. And on the hip line, I'll come in by about five inches. So I'll just connect this to meet the five inches with my pattern master. Then I'll take one inch 
to for the slash and spread i'll just use one inch all through to the waist then on this hip line i'll take two inches so i'll use a long ruler to connect it to meet to meet the two inches so on this side i'll continue to take two inches so i'll just connect it to meet the one inch so i'm trying to make sure i get it accurately so i'll, I'll cut through the lines so make sure you don't cut it through completely make sure you stop before the end of the line So I'll be slashing it and I'll place it on another piece of pattern paper. So I'll open it up. So I've gone ahead to place it and I use masking tape to hold it here. So I used, I opened it for about, I, here I used 2.5, here I used 3 inches, then I used 3 inches all to the end. So I'll just shape it out like this. Then I'll get this triangle shape. Now I'll be cutting it out. Then on the hip line, I'll notch it so that I'll know where the hip line is when I'm drafting it on the fabric. So this is the main pattern. So I'll place this one on the main pattern. Then I'll pleat it until I have the same shape. But I'm finding it difficult I'll do that later on the fabric so now this is the velvet fabric I make sure the stretchy part is on the fold as you can see it's stretchy now on the mesh the stretchy part is also on a fold so I folded it into four as you can see so the reason why I'm cutting two is because one is going to serve as a lining to turn it so I added half an inch here all round i also did the same thing for the back i added half an inch but i didn't add anything here i didn't add allowance because it's stretchy so it won't be necessary so on the main fabric i added two inches on the side and half inch on the top and on the bottom then on the front i also did the same thing i added two inches by the side and half an inch on the top and the bottom so i'll just go ahead and cut it out so I'll notch this part so that I'll know where the zip will be so that I don't get confused. So I'll also cut through this mesh. So for the back, I cut out four pieces. I'll be using two for the lining. On the front, I cut out two. I'll be using one for the lining. So this is the lace. I'll be placing it on this door face satin. So I'll be cutting the bustier cup on it. So after I cut it out, I'll show you, but I'll be cutting with lining. So I also cut out lining for the front pattern. This is the lining and this is the velvet fabric. So I did the same thing for the back, I cut out the lining. So on the bustier cup, I've gone ahead to cut it out. This is the pattern, I added half inch all round. I added two inches by the side here. Then on the door face satin, this is the door face satin, it will be on the lace will be on top of it. So this I'll place it on the satin. So this is the lining. On the center front, I added half an inch all round. So this is the lace and the satin and also the lining. So I've gone ahead to cut the skirt pattern also. So this is the back piece. Here I have the lace. And also the satin that was to turn it and also the lining so this is the front skirt pattern i cut out the satin with the main skirt pattern and i cut out the lace using the slash and spread method so i'll place the lace on the satin so from the hip i've already notched the hip line i know where it is so i'll start pleating it on the hip point until i get the exact shape of the satin so i'll go ahead and pin it up while pleating it, I'll be pinning it up until I get the exact shape. So you just be patient while pleating it until you get the accurate shape. So when I'm done, I'll top stitch on it. I'll top stitch on it and I'll show you later. So this is the bustier cup. 
I attached the lace and the satin together and I top stitched on it so that it won't shift while I'm sewing it. So I also added interfacing on it. So this is the lining. And on the lining I added interfacing, I also added wording to it. So remember I told you I added two inches by the side for same allowance. So this is the center front. So I added the lace and the satin together and top stitched on it so this is the lining i added wording and interfacing and i notched the boss point so it will be like this this is the other side so i'll join it together by half an inch so i'm trying to show you what it will look like so this is the basque triangle shape it will be on the lower part here so I'll pick these two together and I'll sew it. I'll make sure the two boss points are together or are aligning, then I'll pin it up. So I'll be sewing it by half an inch like this. So it will have something like this. I'll do the same thing for the lining. I'll sew it by half an inch. So I'll make sure the two boss points are aligned, then I'll pin it up. Always notch your boss points. It helps you so accurately so this is what this is what i'll have when i sew it so i'll do the same thing for the other two then i'll take it to the sewing machine and i'll come back and show you so here we have it i've gone ahead to join it by half an inch after joining it i notched it i made sure i notched it and i ironed it i took it to the ironing table and i ironed it properly as you can see the cup is it's having a good shape I did the same thing for the lace. I joined it by half an inch and I also notched it and I ironed it. So this is the second cup. So this is the front yoke. Remember we cut out two pieces. One will serve as the lining. So I'll make sure they are aligning. Then I'll sew the neck by quarter inch. So I'll just go ahead and pin it up. Then after sewing it, I'll turn it to the good side. Then I'll top stitch on this side. I'll top stitch it all around so that it will not shift when I'm joining it. On the back piece, I also did the same thing. I'll sew it by quarter inch on the neckline and I'll come back and show you. So I've gone ahead to join the front yoke and I top stitched on it here. So I'll place the cup on it like this. So what I'll do is I'll sew it by quarter inch to the end. To, to achieve that, I'll turn it over like so. The good side will face the good side. Then I'll pick it here from the edge. I'll, I'll pin it up. Then after doing that, I'll turn it over like this. So I'll turn it over here. I'll make sure the right side of the mesh is on the right side of the fabric and I'll I'll pick these points here like this and I'll pull this other side out and I'll pin it up so this side is a bit technical when you're sewing it so you'll be very careful so that you get it properly so after doing this I'll do the same thing for this other side I'll turn it to the good side then I'll sew it by quarter inch here from this point i'll start sewing it then when i'm done i'll turn it over on the other side then i'll sew it by quarter inch so i'll take it to the sewing machine and i'll come back and show you so i'm done this is the outcome so as you can see i joined it by quarter inch so this is the front part so this is the back yoke I've joined it by quarter inch then I'll turn it to the good side then this is the second part then I'll place the part the back panel on it then I'll turn it to the right side then I'll sew it by half an inch I'll do the same thing for this other part I'll sew it by half an inch so I'll just pin it up so I'll have something like this when I sew it then on the front top I'll place this lower part that is from remember it's on the underboss this triangle shape part I'll join it together 
I'll make sure I get the center point. I'll notch the center point and also I'll notch the center point of the top and I'll turn it to the right side like this after getting the center point then I'll pin it up so I'll sew it by half an inch so I'll take the front and the back to the sewing machine and when I'm done I'll come back and show you so guys I've joined the back panel with the yoke and also the lower part of the front I've also joined it now I'll be joining the front shoulder and the back shoulder together so to achieve that I'll open the back like this and also the front and I'll get the stitched part this center part I'll make sure the two stitched parts are aligning then I'll, I'll pin it up here then I'll sew it by half an inch I'll do the same thing for the other shoulder I'll open it up get the center point here pin it up then I'll sew it by half an inch also. So I'll do that and show you. So guys, after joining the shoulder, I also turned the armhole. Remember, it's a sleeveless dress. I noticed it was difficult to sew the armhole, so I had to lose this part so that I can easily turn the armhole. So this was where I stitched. I stitched it inside. But not to worry, I'll, I'll show you what I did on the second armhole. So to turn the second armhole, I'll lose this part. So I've loosened it. The next thing I'll do is remember we've joined the shoulder. So what I'll do is to pick, turn it over like this. I'll make sure, I'll make sure the good side is facing the good side here. Then this shoulder part, this part of the shoulder, I'll make sure they are aligning. Then I'll pin it up. Then I'll sew it by quarter inch. So I'll make sure I pick this other side. I'll pull it out here and I'll sew it so I'm trying to pull it out then I'll take it to the sewing machine and I'll sew from here to the end and I'll show you so I'm done as you can see I've turned the armhole and I've given it a good press so I've joined the back so this is the other side that's the zipper side of the back so on this part, I fixed the mesh before the one inch. So I've also joined this front part. I'll be adding a reglin boning on the under bust to the waist. So this is reglin boning I'll be using. It helps to clinch the waist. So how do I do that? I'll start. I'll take a straight line from the center here. Remember, we notch the center. I'll just take a straight line to the angle point here. Then. On this that side, I'll take another straight line down. I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'll connect it from the dart down. After doing that, from this from this center center line, I'll come out by two inches. Then I'll connect it to this point. But before that, from this that line, I'll come out by half an inch before connecting it. So I'll take another with my ruler. I'll take another line. So from this dart, I'll also come out by one inch. Then from this point, I'll come out by 1.5 inches. Then I'll take a straight line. So I'll mark same measurement on this other side. So after marking it, make sure when you're fixing the boning, make sure the curvy part is on top like this. So before I fix it, I'll come, I'll come up from this point by half an inch or three quarter inch here. Then I'll, I'll place the boning from this point till I get to the under bust here. So let me cut it out. So I'll place it from here to this point. So I'll sew it by the edge here. You can sew on top of the boning. So it won't affect your needle or anything so i'll do the other side i'll sew it very close to the edge here to this point so i'll repeat same thing on all the lines i just took so i'll make sure the curvy part is on top like this and i'll come up by half an inch and i'll cut it out so i'll place it here 
and I'll sew it by quarter inch or very close to the edge. I'll do it all round and I'll show you when I'm done. So I've sewn on top of the boning on the edge all round. I place it on the lines I took. So this is the effect as you can see. So if you want the boning to be on the good side of the top, you can encase it with a bias tape. So on the back, I added one boning on the dart line here. The next thing I'll be doing is to turn the dress with lining. So this is the first one, the first cup. And this is the second cup. So it will be like this when we sew it. But to sew it, we'll pick, we'll pick it from this part and we'll make sure it's aligning on this other side of the dress. So you sew very close to the stitched part here. So I'll just pin it up. So I'll fix the second cup. I'll make sure I put tuck this part in so that I don't sew on top of the mesh. Then I'll pull this side out. Then I'll place the right side of the cup of the lining on this part here. Then I'll pin it up. So I'll make sure I sew very close to the stitch till I get to the end. So after I sew this part, after I sew this part, I'll turn it over. Remember this side is open, we'll still use the lining to turn it over. So I'll pull, tuck this side in, then I'll pull this part. Then I'll sew close to the stitch to the end. So I'll just pin it up. So I'll sew close to the stitch. So this is what I'll have when I sew it. So I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'll turn it over like so. Then I'll make sure I get the two edge here. Then I'll pin it up. So I'll have this. It's not looking neat yet, but when I sew it, you'll see the difference. So I'll join the lower part of the lining to the top. I'll get the center point, then I'll sew it by half an inch and show you when I'm done. So I fixed it as you can see after sewing it, it's looking neat. So this is the inseam finishing. I hope it's looking lovely. <laughs> Anyways, this is the front. So the next thing I'll be doing is to place the skirt on the top. So I went ahead to top stitch on it here to the end. I did the same thing on the other side. So I also top stitch on this part here so that it will be one piece. So this is the effect of the drip. So I'll place it here. That's the top and the skirt together. I'll place this angle point here. I'll pin it up. So I'll be sewing it by half an inch. So it will look like this when I sew it. So on the back skirt, I also top stitch the lace to the satin. So I'll place the right side of the skirt to the top and I'll pin it up. So I'll be sewing it by half an inch. So let me sew it and show you. So I've joined the skirt to the top. So this is the drape. I also joined the skirt lining to the top lining. So the next thing is to fix the zipper. So what I'll do is to take the two back pieces together, so the right side facing each other. Then from the waist point, from the waistline, I'll come down by eight or nine inches. So from this nine inches, I'll sew it down to the end by one inch. I'll sew it here to the end. So after sewing it, I'll be fixing the zip. So this is the zip I'll be using. So I'll place it and sew it. When I come back, I'll show you. So I'll fix the zip. So this is the wrong side. So I'll cut this out. So for the slit, I left about seven inches for the slit. So I top stitch this part. Now on the lining, I've joined the top to the waist. So it will be like this. 
so what i'll do is the good side of the lining i'll turn it over it will be on top of the mesh like this then i'll sew very close to the stitch so i'll pin it up so i'll be sewing it to the end so i'll do the same thing for the other so the other lining i'll pin it up now to turn the zip with the lining on this part of the zip i'll turn it over to face the main fabric on this zip part then i'll make sure the right side of the lining is on the right side of the fabric like this and i'll make sure the zip is in between the lining and the fabric and i'll sew it till i get to all through to the end so i'll just pin it up So I'll sew it very close to this stitched part until I get to where the slit stops. Then I'll turn it over to the good side here. So I'll have something like this. So this is the slit. This is how it will be when I sew it. So I'll repeat the same thing on this other side and I'll show you when I'm done. So I've fixed the zip and I've turned it with the lining as you can see. So we are done fixing our lining to the dress so the next thing is to join the front and the back together to achieve that i'll take the circumference measurement the both circumference for this measurement is 38 38 divided by 2 will give us 19.5 so i'll have excess of 4 inches so i'll divide it into two and i'll place 2 inches here and here and the under both circumference is 30 when i divide it by 2 i have 15 so i have excess of 4.5 4.5 divided by 2 will give me 2.5 so i'll place it on both sides this is 31 when i divide it into 2 i have 15.5 so i have excess of 3 inches 3 inches divided by 2 will give me 1.5 i'll place it on both sides the hip is 41 41 divided by 2 will give us 20.5 so i have excess of 4 inches so i'll divide it into two and i'll place two inches here and on the other side so what i have on the hip i'll take it to the full length so i'll mark it out so after marking the measurement i'll make sure the front fabric and the back fabric are together like this and i'll make sure on the waistline it tallies with the back that is the front waist tallies with the back waist so i'll pin it up here So I'll sew it from this point to the end. So I'll sew it on the measurement I marked. So I'll do the same thing on this other side. I'll sew it to the end. After doing that, I'll pick the lining, front lining and back lining together. I'll do the same thing. I'll mark it and I'll sew it. So I'll sew the other side and I'll show you when I'm done. So guys, I've joined it as you can see. This is the pleated part. It did not affect the dress and I've given it a good press. So this is the effect of the drip. So this is the front and this is the back. I'm sure it's looking very beautiful. So now I'll be joining the hemline. So to achieve that, I'll turn it to the wrong side. So I'll open this part of the hip line on the lining so that I can turn it out when I sew the the hemline because there won't be anywhere to turn it out so i'll create a space on the hip line to turn it out but before then on the hemline i'll start sewing it from this slit part i'll make sure the right side of the lining is on the right side of the fabric and i'll start sewing it sewing it by one inch but also i made the lining half an inch shorter than the main fabric then i'll continue to sew it till i get to this other slit then i'll sew it and show you so I'm done sewing it by one inch. I made the line in half an inch shorter, like I said. So now I opened this side of the hip, this side of the hip on the lining so that I'll, I can easily turn it out. So I've turned it to the good side. Here I have the hem line. So this is the slit. So on this part I open, you can easily top stitch it when you are sure that the dress fits your client. So if it doesn't fit, you can always pull it out and adjust it. Then you top stitch it when you are done. So the next thing I'll be doing is to take it to the ironing table and give it a good press. Then I'll show you. 
so i've ironed it so this is the full dress and it fits perfectly so on this part you can decide to leave it like this it's still very fine i'll be adding this strip of applique on the on the dress so i'll attach it on this part i added boning so i'll place it carefully and i'll use hand needle to tack it so i'll cut it out and make sure i have it complete then i'll use hand needle and tack it and i'll show you when i'm done so we are done here is the dress on the mannequin i hope the tutorial was helpful if you have any question you can let me know in the comment section please don't forget to subscribe and like thank you